Today we're in central BC with a really short growing season. In fact, we have about 100 frost-free days to grow all of our food in this climate. However, we've got a passive solar greenhouse behind us, which allows us to extend that growing season to four full seasons using a minimum amount of energy. So today we have an opportunity to go take a look inside of this greenhouse. It's not quite done, which allows us to look behind the scenes in ways that we won't be able to see in just a few months from now, once we have a tropical food forest growing in there. We're going to talk about the integrated design between the greenhouse, the kitchen and the root cellars, how they connect together and how this novel technology can be used to grow nutrient dense food all year round. I'm standing in the main growing area, which we refer to as the passive solar greenhouse. Now this greenhouse is quite unique in that when you compare this to a conventional greenhouse, which has glass on all six sides, you'll notice that I'm in a greenhouse where the walls to the west, the east and the north are insulated. This allows us to minimize thermal energy loss while maximizing the amount of visible light coming in to grow our plants. We do this so that we can grow plants year round with minimal energy use. We do this with a variety of innovative technologies, one of which is the solar wall right here to my right. The solar wall is black so that it absorbs solar radiation throughout the day and it's perforated so that as air moves through the wall surface, it picks up that thermal energy. The air is then sucked into this silver duct and injected below my feet through a network of pipes that allows that thermal energy to be released into the soil. The soil itself picks that energy up like a battery and allows us to move energy from the summer and the fall into the winter. And so with a very small amount of electricity running a small fan, we're able to move that surplus energy in the summer and keep this greenhouse warm year round, allowing us to have a very secure supply of food. Now this system not only provides heat through the winter, but as we're storing that thermal energy through the summertime, it actually also provides a cooling benefit as well. So air that moves through this network of pipes, releasing that energy into the soil, comes out the other side and is cooled and humidified, ensuring that we keep a really fantastic growing condition for the plants inside the greenhouse. The subterranean heating and cooling system is completely automated. So when it gets too hot in here, the system turns on in order to store heat and cool the greenhouse. And when the system gets too cold, then the fan turns back on again in order to inject heat back into the greenhouse. So it has two set points that allows it to moderate the temperature within the greenhouse. Now, in addition to that system, we also have a garage door that's automated. So if it gets really hot in here, the garage door will actually open up. If it gets too cold, the garage door will close. And then the garage door is also programmed to automatically close at night. So even if it is too hot in here, it'll still come down for security reasons. We also have automated vents on the south side as well as on the north side. And we have circulation fans to make sure that there's enough air movement in the greenhouse to give plants exercise because they like to have a little bit of movement throughout the day. So the greenhouse is 800 square feet and we're setting it up to mimic a Mediterranean and subtropical climate. So we're going to be growing things like avocado, banana, bay laurel, fig, and possibly olives. And the greenhouse is located adjacent to a commercial kitchen where we can take the food that we grow in here, we can preserve it in various methods, and then we can go and put it into a root cellar. And I'll show you what those root cellars look like and how that whole process goes from kitchen to root cellar right now. We're in the basement at the Morningside Greenhouse right now, and this is where our primary and secondary root cellars are. It's also where we bring all the power into the greenhouse and we manage the power throughout the space. So this is our primary panel and this provides power to all the loads in the greenhouse in a grid up scenario. But we've also designated certain loads in the greenhouse, specifically all the functions in the greenhouse, the root cellars and emergency lights onto a secondary emergency panel right here. And this panel will provide power to the greenhouse in a grid down scenario, ensuring that our food production as well as the food storage mechanism of this greenhouse 
works regardless of the state of the grid. Lastly, this is also where we have the brain of the greenhouse. And so this small little controller up here is what measures the temperature in the greenhouse, the root cellars, and it manages all of the geothermal heating as well as the ventilation and any kind of circulation of air within the greenhouse itself. So I'm still standing in the mechanical room, just in an adjacent corner. And in front of me is a heat recovery ventilator. This heat recovery ventilator pulls the waste gases out of the kitchen in order to harvest the heat and the humidity and get rid of the CO2 that accumulates when people are using the kitchen. The waste gases and that surplus heat is then exchanged through a heat exchanger in here. Fresh air comes through the heat recovery ventilator captures that heat, but whatever isn't captured in the waste gases then gets injected into the greenhouse, providing a low grade heat, as well as that CO2 that was generated while we were using the kitchen can be used as a plant food within the greenhouse. This building houses three separate root cellars. We have a root cellar to my right on the other side of this wall, and it's specifically designed for crops that want to be cool and humid, things like potatoes, carrots, um, even apples potentially. And above me, we have a root cellar that's cool and dry. So it's great for canned goods, things like flowers, peas, grains, things that like a low humidity, but still benefit from being cool. This one down here is further into the ground and so it is cold and dry. And so this would be really good for aging meat um, or storing crops that need a lower humidity. And so every crop has its own humidity and temperature profile in order to prolong the amount of time that you can actually store this crop and be able to use it into the future. What makes the root cellar different in this situation are these earth tubes. So earth tubes convey air from the outside underground and by doing that we are able to condition the air to the temperature of the earth around four degrees celsius year round. It travels through this pipe through a fan over there in the corner and is injected into that root cellar over there. By moving the air through these earth tubes, we're not only lowering its temperature in the summer, raising it in the winter, but we're also humidifying the airstream. And by injecting it into this root cellar uh, to my right hand side, we're making sure that there's always fresh air in that room, ensuring that there's never an anoxic condition. It's really important that we build maintenance into these systems. And so these caps can be removed. We can put a rope through here with a rag with hydrogen peroxide or chlorine that allows us to clean the interior surface of the earth tubes should they ever get fouled up. This is the primary root cellar and I'm standing in front of the duct that comes from those earth tubes that we just spoke about. Air gets injected through this pipe here and it pressurizes the room and then the air that leaves the room comes out of this duct right here which gets injected into the greenhouse. And you can see we already have crops from last season. Uh, we've got a, a batch of carrots right here in this sawdust which is ready to go to the kitchen. Canning and food preservation can create a lot of heat and humidity and so it made a lot of sense to have a canning kitchen, commercial kitchen, with our passive solar greenhouse and our root cellar. So food comes from the greenhouse into the prep space, we can preserve it, and as soon as we've finished preserving the food, it can go straight into the root cellar. The greenhouse heating system is quite novel in that uh, sun comes through the glazing on the south side, it hits the solar wall, the solar wall being painted black will heat up, and there's an airspace behind that uh, metal clad surface which heats air up behind it. That air then gets sucked into the duct and gets injected under the ground, heating up the soil underneath the plants. So all summer long, we're absorbing that excess thermal energy in the soil, and the soil is actually warming up in preparation for winter. When winter comes along, the soil underneath the plants is warm and moist, which allows it to uh, release its energy all winter long, keeping the greenhouse above freezing. And so this is a, a very novel way of basically moving excess thermal energy in the summertime into the wintertime, which is what allows us to run a four season greenhouse. The earth tubes connected to the root cellar function in a similar fashion. Hot air in the summertime is brought through the earth tubes and tempered back down to earth temperature, approximately four degrees Celsius. And in doing that, it ensures that the air going into the root cellar doesn't get too warm, thus decomposing the vegetables too quickly. In the wintertime, we can pull cold air through those earth tubes, which will then warm them up, making sure that our root cellar doesn't go below zero. 
Now in doing that, the ground will actually freeze harder through the winter time, which gives us a stored bank of cold energy that we can then gain access to in the following summer. So the root cellar fresh air comes from a series of earth tubes and excess air from the root cellar and any of the noxious gases that come off of the vegetables being stored there get pumped into the greenhouse, which benefit the plants. The kitchen uh, also produces waste gases, humidity, and has excess heat when cooking is going on. And so uh, we have a ventilation system called a heat recovery ventilator, and that exhausts the air from the kitchen um, into the root cellar as well, thus uh, injecting humidity and CO2, as well as the noxious gases that can be created as a result of decomposing vegetables into the greenhouse. This pipe is the exhaust from the heat recovery ventilator. And so stale air coming from the kitchen is pulled through that heat exchanger and anything that's left over from a heat or humidity perspective is pumped into the greenhouse. So this also provides a low grade heat and humidity for the plants within the space. Thanks so much for coming on the greenhouse tour today. We're at a really interesting phase in the greenhouse in that we're not quite done and so we can show you things that are not going to be visible in the very near future. If you want to follow this project as well as the other projects that we're working on within Fifth World, then make sure you check at the link in the show notes down below, sign up for our newsletter, check out our website, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much guys, we'll see you in the next video.